Hello and good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Athabasca University's special webinar this morning. Uh, it's for the MBA application workshop. So before we get started today, I just want to make sure that you can hear me okay. My name is Farid Nordin. I'm the manager of strategic recruitment and enrollment at the Faculty of Business. So before we get started, I just want to make sure that you can hear me okay and you can see the title slide of the presentation. Um, because I just want to make sure that, uh, yeah, that uh, you can hear me okay. So you can communicate with me at any time during this, this presentation by going to the question box on your screen. There's a question box that you can uh, type in your comments or your questions. So at this point, I do like to get uh, some sort of feedback from, uh, from a few people that I see here in the room. Um, if you can just type in that you can hear me okay, then we can start the webinar. Um, I'm going to um, see if I can pick a few people here. Uh, Kevin, Dina, okay, perfect, Kevin. Thank you so much for the feedback uh, because sometimes nothing is worse than uh, speaking on the microphone when nobody's listening to you. <laughs> All right, thank you. So with that, we can start the webinar. Again, my name is Farid Nordin. I'm with the Faculty of Business. Um, I've been uh, with, the, with the Faculty of Business for over nine years now in my capacity as a recruiter for the uh, graduate programs, primarily the MBA, DBA, and leadership management development um, programs. So before we get moving here, I just want to um, say a few words about LEN, LEN acknowledgement that Athabasca University is Canada's online university and is proud to welcome a diversity of learners from all over Canada. We respectfully acknowledge that we live and work on the traditional lands of the Indigenous peoples of Canada, and we honour the ancestry, heritage, and gifts of Indigenous peoples and give thanks to them. As we gather today, I am in Treaty 6 in uh, Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta, which encompasses, encompasses 17 First Nations, including the Diné, Suline, Cree, Dakota Sioux, and so Solto and Métis peoples. So um, with that, um, yeah, you, you already know, um, heard about my brief introduction. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to be facilitating this webinar this morning uh, with my colleague, Shannon LaRose. Um, so turn on my camera can move the next slide here. Unfortunately, um, Shannon's having a bit of a technical problem to the camera. So um, hello, Shannon, and um, how are you today? <laughs> Good, thank you, Fareed. And, and thank you for everyone uh, joining us today. Looking forward to uh, giving you some tips and information on, on putting your application together. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Shannon. And uh, we have a special guest this morning as well. Um, Dr. Marta Ma Massey, PhD, is our MBA program director. Good morning, Marta. I see you there. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, um, Marta was assistant professor at Trent University in Canada. She has been an assistant uh, professor at the Catholic University of the Sacred Heart in Italy, as well as a lecturer at McGill University. Marta's research focuses on consumer behavior, digital marketing, and branding. She has published uh, several books, uh, primarily in the Journal of Market Research, Journal of Strategic Marketing, and Journal of Business and Industrial Marketing, just to name a few. Um, so we are glad to have Marta here to, to, to join us today, and uh, Marta will be able to answer any specific questions about the application process and about the program. Um, so this is a great opportunity um, for you to be here and then we're happy for you to to be here as well so thank you marla so for the rest thank of the presentation i, I will be turning off you're welcome i'll be turning off my camera just uh for bandwidth purposes so we're just going to do a quick um recap of the au online mba program i know some of you have tuned in to our previous webinar where we really went deep um into the um into the specifics of the mba program so we'll, I'll, I'll, bring, I'll do a recap of the um, program, program structure, and then uh, Shannon will take over where she talks about the uh, routes of entry and then the specifics of the application package, which is, which is why you're here today, to really understand uh, why certain things are important and, and to kind of you know, get some, some, some tips and advice on what to avoid in putting in your application. Okay. So, um, again, just a reminder, you can always send me a quick um, chat if you wish, in a, either the, in the question box or in the chat box on your screen. 
And also, I just want to remind you that um, you can download this presentation by going to the handout section on your screen. There's a PDF of this presentation that you can download um, right now. Uh, we will also be sending you a copy of this presentation with the um, slides at the end of the day today. So, okay, let's get started. So, as you know, there are five uh, main benefits of the MBA program. The first is the flexibility, whereby you can do this program anywhere, anytime, due to our asynchronous delivery format. Uh, this is a full MBA program, which is 48 credits. So therefore you are expected to work in groups and, and, is, based, and is a paced and cohort based program. However, you don't have to be in front of the computer at any given time or date. Again, this goes back to our asynchronous delivery model. Um, so you can do this program pretty much anywhere, anytime, as long as you follow the um, specific schedule that is set in each course. So you can do this program minus the commute. Thirdly, uh, because we are online and we are delivering this program digitally, we are able to um, attract and retain uh, uh, coaches, uh, faculty members, as well as learners and, and, and our students from across Canada and across the world. So you get a, a really diversified op opinion and life uh, experiences and um, work um, with from your colleagues. Um, that adds depth to the program's curriculum. So that global perspective is really um, a wonderful thing for you to, to, to learn about uh, business and management from your peers. Um, even though the program is digital, you are not um, doing this program in a vacuum. We do offer a highly supported environment where we are here for you. So what that means is that we have dedicated team members from the graduate enrollment advisors, an IT help desk team, cross production, as well as your academic professors and coaches, uh, right up to the dean. So we are all here for you and to make sure that you are successful in your program, so you are not um, working alone. Last but not least, um, the program is, is built in such a way that you can tailor your own MBA, particularly in phase two of the program, whereby you can tailor your own journey um, depending on the electives that you take or do you do the applied project with electives. So you do have lots of uh, flexibility in this program, which is another um, key feature of this program. So I just want to also briefly recap um, the program structure. So those of you who are qualified to apply to the program via the standard route of entry, this is the courses that you'll be uh, doing in the program. So the program is broken into two phases. Uh, phase one, you have six core courses with a comprehensive exam. Each core course, which is three credits, is eight weeks in length. So every three credit course is eight weeks. Um, six credit courses are 10 weeks, which is, um, which is some of the electives do have six credit courses. So you do have breaks between courses. Normally it's a one to two week break core, um, sorry, one to two week break in uh, between courses, and then you'll jump into another course with another eight weeks and so on and so forth. So at the end of phase one, well, let me start. At the beginning of phase one, you do have an orientation, which is a five day orientation, uh, whereby um, our academy area manager and coaches will, will, will show you how to work in our proprietary platform. You know, from submitting your assignments to your group chats and discussions, connecting with our uh, admin staff, all of that will be taught, um, will be shown to you in the orientation. Then you jump straight to your first course of strategic management, and then you go through until the end of operations management, then you'll do a comprehensive exam. This is open book, open text. You have six days uh, to, ans to answer six questions um, in the program. Um, in the conference exam. So you do not have to uh, be at the uh, exam center um, to, to do the exam. This is more of how you um, think and provide your solutions to the questions being asked from each of the core courses that you had taken. So that is the comprehensive exam part. Um, we do know that um, some students do take time off um, from, from work to really focus on the exam. And it is a pace, uh, sorry, pass or fail exam. So that's, um, so that is the um, the the uh, gist of the comprehensive exam. Once successfully completed in exam, then you will be awarded the graduate diploma in management, or the GDM, which is uh, consisted of the six uh, core courses that you had taken, which is which are 18 credits. Then you move into phase two, which you have four more core courses, 
Uh, again, those core courses are eight weeks, and then you have a couple of weeks break in between courses. Um, breaks are norm typically longer in the summer and in the winter time, um, but around around uh, December where there's a holiday. So breaks are typically a bit longer there, but normally it's between one to um, two weeks uh, between courses. Then you, once you finish the four core courses uh, in four in phase two, you have the option of either doing an applied project, which is an academic paper, plus electives, or you can choose to do more electives uh, to round out your MBA journey with us. So that again, that's where the tailoring your own MBA journey comes in, where you can choose to do an applied project or electives. So you can choose um, all course-based electives to further. Um, explore ideas and knowledge in, in, in business and management subjects that you may not be familiar with or that you're curious about. And um, you don't have to decide which um, option that you have to do um, in, the, in the beginning of the program. You can decide that in phase two of the program. And one note here that I have to mention is that uh, one of the course electives have to be an in-residence component. So um, in the past, we used to have in residences uh, in physical locations across Canada and some and some years internationally as well. But now we're looking more of a blended um, in residence where you will be doing it synchronously with your peers in that course. Um, in, plus, we also have uh, in person as well. So depending on the course and the years offered, uh, you do have the, those options for the in residence. Okay. I think I'm just uh, gonna go on to the next slide here. And also, yeah, um, on average, uh, we do recommend uh, students to invest on average between 20 to 25 hours a week in each course to be successful. And that um, and you, between five to six days a week on the, on the discussion boards uh, with, your core, with your cohort and your coaches um, to be successful in this program. So it is, it is, um, it is required a, a time and effort, um, but um, because it is a full MBA program, which is 48 credits. Okay, so let's move on to the um, main purpose of today's webinar is to about um, your application package. So before Shannon takes you through the admission requirements and application pa package, sorry, in greater detail, I just want to let you know that um, this program, um, as you, you will hear a bit later on, revolves around your manager experience or management experience. Um, so there are three main reasons why um, this is important uh, in your application package. Uh, the three reasons why we require management experience in our program is because we want to ensure learners such as yourself who are looking to get into an MBA program are at the right stage in their careers and have enough real life examples to add to the learning environment with your fellow cohorts um, when you're in the courses. So you want to make sure that you're at right stage because the program is designed for the mid-career level managers or leaders or hires. Um, we do have C-suites um, uh, students in the program as well. So we want to make sure that everybody's at, a, at the same playing field, if you will, uh, starting the program. Another reason why management experience is also important is because our program focuses on putting theories into practice. So what that means is that you, you study a concept today, um, we want you to practice that in your workplace the next day, right? So learners must be able to connect their learning to what is happening in the real world and in their workplace uh, to apply the knowledge and um, skills as they go. So again, connecting theory to practice. Um, lastly, applicants are assessed to see if they're in a position within their organizations to, contrib to contribute real life examples rather than hypothetical ones uh, in your discussions and again, connect the managerial skills covered in MBA courses to, to your daily work. So showcasing your managerial experience is a really um, strong um, recommendation or even requirement to be successful in your application to our program. So I think that's um, my quick recap there. <laughs> I hope everybody, um, um, had that um, information. And again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the question box on your screen. And we will uh, do have um, some time to answer your questions as well. Okay. So on that note, I'm just going to turn on to Shannon.
who's going to start going to the details about Epic Shim package, starting with the emission requirements. Over okay, to you, thank Shannon. You, thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. All right. So I'm just going to uh, recap uh, uh, the different entry uh, pathways to come into the MBA program. So the first would be if you come to us with an undergraduate degree from an accredited post-secondary institution, along with um, at least three years of management experience. The second would be if you come to us with a accepted professional designation, along with five years of management experience. And we have a complete list of our, our designations on our website. And then the third would be if you come to us uh, just based on your management experience alone. So if you can demonstrate that you have um, at least eight years of progressive management experience, that is another way um, that you can apply to the program. And we do not require the GMAT to, to apply. Okay. And we also offer the accelerated route of entry. So this would be for any folks that, that hold an undergraduate business degree. Uh, so the admission requirements are very specific. You must have an undergraduate business degree completed within the past 10 years, along with a grade point average of 3.0 or higher for the last 60 credits, along with at least three years of management experience. So the accelerated um, a program is a 30 credit program, which can be finished in approximately 19 months. Um, so again, the, the requirements are very specific. If you feel that, that you might meet the, those uh, requirements, I'd encourage you to visit the um, frequently asked questions about the accelerated entry, just because there's a, um, um, there's some good detailed information in there. So um, yeah, so that's that's the information on the accelerated route of entry. Okay, so what is management experience? Um, just kind of want to touch on that so uh, everybody understands what, what we're looking for. So the required management experience must be with progressive responsibility, and it can include managing either people, projects, or budgets, or any combinations of these. Providing quantified quantifiable details on your management responsibilities and examples of your decision-making authority is really important for this type of application. So for example, if you have direct reports, um, you'd want to include the number of direct reports and any information about leading people. If you manage a budget, or you have your budget, budget responsibilities, you want to include the approximate or the range of the budget. And, and your budget responsibilities and, and your skills. And lastly, if you manage projects, um, it would be good to provide a couple of, uh, like two or three examples of significant projects that you've managed. And uh, you don't have to go into really great detail, but you can, you can provide examples of projects just by using, you know, bullet points and, and answering um, or, or providing information on, you know, a brief description of the project, uh, the value of the project, how many people were on your team, and, and the outcome of the project. So this just gives, gives a, a snapshot of, 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 a, of your project management experience. So, um, so I just wanted to turn to Marta, and I just wondered, you know, do you want to elaborate on the management experience requirement uh, for, for the program? Sure, thank you, Shannon. So basically, when we talk about managerial experience, we basically refer to the time that you have spent and the roles that you have had in which you have been um, responsible for supervising, overseeing the work of others, managing resources and making decisions that can affect the operational outcomes of your organization. So what, for instance, managerial experience can include tasks such as the following planning, organizing, staffing, leading, directing, controlling. So when you write your application, make sure that you mention all your managerial and supervisory experience, including a description of the duties and responsibilities in the context of project management, number of direct reports, budgetary responsibilities, indicating also the approximate budget, because the criteria that we use commonly to evaluate the managerial experience include 
the size of the project that you have supervised, the budget amount, the number of people, the number of subordinates that you have managed, the significance of the project and the operation to the organization, so the, its strategic influence basically, and also the complexity and types of relationships involved and the corresponding skills that are required, for example, leadership of a team. So the, the admissions committee um, must be able to, to get this information, to elicit this information from your application. And your managerial experience, it, it's crucial. It is crucial because it could make up for the lack of a degree, for the lack of education. So really make sure that you include examples and that you include everything related to your managerial experience. That's great. Thank you, Marta, very much for, for that Welcome. information. Thank you. All right. So we're going to talk about the application package and, and what uh, what's required. So uh, it must include a comprehensive resume, uh, a thousand word essay. We also require three letters of reference, uh, any official transcripts if you're applying with an undergraduate degree, and if you're applying with a uh, professional designation that we recognize, we require a letter of good standing, and of course the online application form and, and the application fees. Okay, and uh, I think that's it for that. I'm going to talk about each of these components separately. Yeah, I think that there's one thing about the uh, international degree, right, Shannon? Mm hmm Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll touch on that actually um, when I do the official transcripts. Okay. Yeah. Thank on. you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, let's <clears throat> move on to the. Here we go. Okay, so the comprehensive resume. So the resume for the MBA, MBA application is different than a job resume. It is, it's the core of your application package, if you will, and, and it needs to be really clear of your management experience. So for the MBA admissions committee to properly assess the breadth and the depth of your, your management experience, you wanna focus and identify the primary scope of your management responsibilities and the key deliverables for each of your positions. So I've got some tips and suggestions that, that uh, that you can um, um, to use to when you're putting your resume together. So it's a good idea to use brief bullet points instead of paragraphs because it's it's easier to read um, read the information and, and and important details don't get lost in in a you know a really wordy uh, resume. So so using brief bullet points is 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 preferred. Um, make sure that you include the start and end months and, and the years for each of your positions, because this helps the committee calculate your years of experience. So that's a really important detail, uh, including your employment status. So if you're full-time or part-time, um, just include that uh, information. If you do have a part-time job, um, you want to include the approximate uh, hours per week that, that you, uh, you work. Um, it's a good idea to avoid using any technical jargon or abbreviations, um, as the committee members may not be familiar with with the company that you work for or the industry that you work in. So, so just try to avoid that. Um, it's a good idea to include who you report to, and, and we just need their title only, but just including that information is helpful just to understand where you are in, in, in the organization. And it's optional, but it, it, it is it is helpful to include just a brief description of, of of the company that you work for. So just one or two sentences. Just again, it helps the admissions committee understand, you know, where you work. So um, as I mentioned earlier, including that quantifiable data is is very very important in your resume. So be sure to do that. And you also want to include any significant achievements in any of your positions and, and your role in those. So don't be afraid to brag about yourself. It's 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 a good thing to to include that. And if you have any skills, um, experience with risk with risk management or stakeholder management or team building and mentoring, be sure to include that kind of information in, in your in your resume. 
definitely include any formal education and training uh, and any volunteer roles or activities. So if you have any any leadership uh, roles in the community, in the community, that it's good to include that information. And of course, um, if you are involved, um, or, or sorry, uh, belong to any professional organizations, if you have any memberships in any organizations, include that as well. So to put all of this information together, we can we can accept a resume between two to four pages. So. You have to be fairly concise and, you know, um, again, using those brief bullet points is, is helpful to kind of keep people on track. So, so um, with all of that, I, I wanted to turn to Fareed and, and just ask you, um, for any folks that, that might be self-employed, uh, for example, a, a consultant or a, an entrepreneur, um, can you provide some suggestions on the type of information that they could include in, in, in their resume? Yeah, thank you, Shannon. Great, great question. Yeah, so for those who are, you know, have, for those who are listening with, a, you know, you have your own companies or your consultant, you can still provide the same information that Shannon um, had mentioned um, in terms of uh, budgets, projects, uh, people. So if you have, you know, direct, um, if you have uh, employees, then it's great. If you don't, then you can include some things uh, similar to how many clients you have, for example, or what kind of portfolio do you manage and what kind of budgets uh, does, the, does portfolio projects carry? Because as a, a entrepreneur, if you own your own business or if as a consultant, you do, you do need to um, have those elements, right? You need to have a client, you need to have a budget, you need to have a, um, a achievement or a goal. Um, in, in, in making sure that whatever you do um, comes to fruition. So those are the things that you can you can you can also include. Um, so it doesn't have to be like a linear um, you know employee corporation, but if you own your own company, you can you can look at it from the point of view of clients, portfolios that corresponds with their budgets and uh, achievements. That that's great. And one other thing would be, you know, uh, maybe as a consultant, you know, again including that quantifiable data like maybe the value of your contracts or you know anywhere where you can fit things like that in that would be good too so thank yeah. you Reed. yeah thanks You're very welcome. much You're welcome all right and then i'm going to turn to marta now and just um just ask if um if you can comment on you know any kind of red flags in a resume um you know that that might um show up uh, to the, a committee member. Sure, thank you, Shannon. Yes, there are a number of red flags that can raise our eyebrows sometimes. For example, when there are two jobs running concurrently, or maybe when there's some inconsistent information in your resume that may indicate an ethical concern. Um, sometimes you list frequent job changes without a real progression in your career. That's also a red flag. Gaps in your employment without an explanation, without justification. Mm, many descriptions, some descriptions sometimes are a little bit vague. Descriptions of tasks and responsibilities of your managerial experience. And also inconsistencies in dates and titles could be an issue. Um, obviously, uh, poor formatting, spelling, grammatical errors can represent red flags. Mm -hmm because they obviously indicate a lack of attention to detail, which is what we are looking for in this MBA. We would like you to have a, a good writing. So make sure that you proofread your account's resume. Perfect. Thank you so much for, for that, uh, Marta. Thank you. That's great information. So uh, we'll just take a pause right now. And if anybody has any questions about what we just spoke about, I'm happy to Happy to answer any questions and Freed will let us know if, if anybody has any questions right now. Yeah, for sure, Shannon. Okay, let me look here. Um, so far, so good. So I think we can carry on. Okay. Next, and next if people part, think yeah. of something later on, we, we can answer it later, later in the webinar. All right. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is the essay. So, um, Part of the application package is, is a thousand word essay. 
And the essay is, a, is another opportunity to, to showcase your management experience and, and to tell your story. So you have an opportunity to reflect on your career and you know when you're responding to the essay questions. And it also connects the dots back to your resume. So when the admissions committee is reading your essay, they can look back at your resume and, and, and see how all of that um, uh, comes together. So um, it's important to stick to the thousand word uh, limit. So you don't wanna go very far over and you don't wanna be too far under. So just try to be as concise as you can and, and, uh, and come to the thousand words. And just one big tip is just make sure that you proofread your essay before you submit it. It's um, you don't you don't want to send an essay in with with uh, you know uh, typos and we just always say spell check is a is a wonderful thing. So do that or have somebody else read it. You know just just make sure that it's um, it's uh, it's solid that way. Um, so Marta, I, I wanted to turn to you and and just. Uh, ask you, you know, can you talk about what the, the committee looks for when they're when they're reading an essay? Um, and sure. I'll just back up for one second. The, the four questions are on the screen here um, on, on this slide, and they're also on our uh, on our application um, website as well. But uh, yeah, if you can just maybe talk about what the committee looks for. Yeah, when thank you, Shannon. I would say that this essay is an opportunity for candidates to expand on their experience, managing their experience by including examples. So here you have an opportunity for adding additional details and make us understand who you are, what your skills are, what your potential is, what your motivations to do an MBA are. So it's a place where you can reflect upon your career, your career goals. And the committee will read this through and will use this a thousand word essay to assess your managerial experience and your potential to be um, to, to pursue graduate level studies. So we are going to look for your motivations. So what is driving you? We are also going to look for your writing skills and writing style and um, how you convey your ideas, how you communicate your ideas. We're also going to look for evidence and examples of your managerial experience. And uh, the essay will also be an opportunity for us to understand your leadership and ability to manage people successfully. So it's a great opportunity for you to explain how your managerial responsibilities have changed and progressed through your, throughout your career. And I encourage you to make examples of your managerial experience and uh, the project that you managed in terms of their nature, size, and duration. I would suggest, I would recommend that you focus on two or three experiences that have had the most impact on the development of your managerial skills and abilities on your career. And also here um, is a place to discuss your expectations. So what do you expect the program to offer to you in terms of personal development, career development and learning? So I would say that's pretty much it. Thank that's you. great. Thank you, Marta. That, that's uh, great, great advice. Thank you. All right. So next we'll talk about the uh, transcripts. So if you're applying to the MBA program with an undergraduate degree, we do require the official transcripts to be sent directly from your post-secondary institution. So, so AU does accept transcripts shared through MyCreds now, and, and this is a secure and, and quick way to share your post-secondary transcripts with other institutions. So um, definitely you know, check that out, see if, you're, uh, if your university is a member of MyCreds, and, and, and that's definitely a, a quick way to, to to uh, share your transcripts. If you can't, um, then you can request your post-secondary institution to email them to us directly. And that uh, email address there is highlighted. Um, and if that is not an option, they can be mailed to us. Um, and so uh, the address there is highlighted as well. So um, <clears throat> so if, if they have to be mailed to us. Try to do that as early as possible because that does take a, a little bit longer. Um, and now this is where I'll also talk about international transcripts. So if you're applying with an international 
um, degree, your um, educational qualifications may require an independent assessment. Um, so uh, listed here are, are the three uh, different um, organizations where it can be assessed. And you do want to allow time for that to be processed. So um, yeah, you might be running out of time if, if you're looking at the May intake, but but if you have any questions about it, just, just let us know when we can talk to you about that. Um, also, if you're applying with a professional designation that we recognize, a letter of good standing is required from that organization, and, and they can also be emailed to that address uh, highlighted. And if you are applying with the CPA designation or the uh, SCMP designation, the official designation transcript is also required. So um, when you're ordering your letter of good standing, you want to order that as well. So transcripts and letters of good standing can be ordered um, and received any time prior to you officially applying. So if we receive the documents, we simply file them and match them with your application uh, once you officially apply. So we really encourage people to, to order these documents early and, and know that's done and, uh, and you don't have to worry about that. Okay, and um, I think that's all I needed to talk to about the transcript. So go to the next slide uh, on reference letters. So, so reference letters, um, again, a requirement, uh, we require at least three reference letters and they should be written by individuals that, that know you very well and can comment on your management skills and experience and, and your readiness for, for graduate studies. So we can accept letters from your current employer or a previous employer. We can't accept letters from family or friends. Um, now we do have reference letter guidelines that you can give to your referees and, and this just really helps them understand what kind of information that they can include in their letter. Um, so we do have uh, the PDF on our website under the application process. Um, reference letters can be emailed directly to us from your referees, again, at any time prior to you officially applying and we'll file the letters and then match them with your doc with your application once you apply. So in this case, we really encourage to, you to reach out to your referees early. Um, as we know, everybody's busy and and I always like to say, you know, it's it's difficult to ask someone to write you a letter and then ask them to hurry up. So so just really allow your referees, you know, ample time to, to write that letter for you and, and uh, get that in. Um, and if you're applying with one of the professional designations that we recognize, we would require two letters of reference along with the letter of good standing from that organization. And uh, reference letters and letters of good standing can be emailed to that uh, highlighted uh, email address. So I hope that's uh, that's a lot of information on that. Um, I, I wanted to turn to Fareed and and again and talk about you know if somebody's self-employed, can you provide examples on? And who who they could ask to write business reference letters as as we can't accept letters from family or friends. So what kind of um, people could they reach out to to ask to write reference letters? Great, thank you, Shannon, for that question. Absolutely, um, yeah. So for those again uh, who are in consulting or in a self-employed uh, situation. You can always get your letters from either your um, clients, your suppliers, your vendors, um, your banks, even even your um, your business partner if, if you have one. So anyone that can really attest that you're ready to do the MBA program at this time in your career, and why that uh, why why is that important to you, right? So as uh, Shannon mentioned, the the uh, the business reference guidelines or the academic reference guidelines is really really important. So I would encourage for you to really look at that um, template and send it off to your referees because it's really detailed on what the admission committees uh, will look for in a reference letter. So yeah, going back to your question, Shannon, yeah, the answer would be um, anyone that can attest your readiness to do the MBA program, such as your clients, vendors, suppliers, or um, it could be your accountant or business partners or even your um, legal representative, as long as they're not friends or family. 
Yeah, no, that that's great. That that's helpful. We we get that question quite often, um, you know, where people, you know, just aren't sure who to ask. And so um, yeah, so hopefully that will help. Thank you, Fareed. And I'm going to turn to my friend Marta and ask her if if you can talk about, you know, the importance of the reference letters for this application. Um, why, sure. why are reference letters so Thank important? You, Okay. Yeah, they. I would say they're crucial. They're very important because they represent a good source of information for the admissions committee. They are. They provide a third-party perspective on the candidate's personal qualities, work ethic, and professionalism. They can also offer insights into how the candidate interacts with their peers, subordinates, and superiors in a professional setting, and they can most importantly, help validate the candidate's claims on the managerial experience and everything that they wrote in the resume and the essay. So um, it, references are very important because they will help com the committee to understand the leadership style and the, the ability to work in a team of the candidate. They will attest the candidate's ability to succeed in an academic environment. Um, and they will help us understand whether the candidate has analytical skills and the ability to work, um, to handle rigorous coursework and uh, to contribute to class discussions. So make sure that you provide a good representation of your experience. So talk to your referees and um, make sure that they include references to your managerial experience. The wording should be clear. Wording like the candidate has the potential to be a good manager would not make a good description. So ask your referees to be as clear as possible in describing your manager experience. And, um, and also you can ask different people, you can ask your current employer, your previous employers, make sure that you can ask your relatives. And so um, brief your referees and provide them with all the information that is necessary for uh, delivering this application and the information must be consistent in your application. So make sure that you present a consistent and coherent narrative of your experience, of yourself, and it must be consistent in the resume, uh, in the references, and the essay. That's great. Thank you. And um, again, you know, the reference letters just supports, you know, your application, right? Like you said, it it kind of um, connects the dots back to your resume and, and your essay. So it's all kind of um, supporting each other. So thank you for that. And I just thought of something else as well, just uh, making sure that uh, the, the letters are on company letterhead and, and signed um, you know, uh, by the, the referee as well. So, all right. I think that's it for that. And so um, the fees for, for putting uh, um, your application, uh, submitting your application, there is a $218 application fee, which is non-refundable. And then if you are applying uh, to the accelerated entry or if you're applying with um, the accounting designation or the SCMP designation, there is an additional $325 transfer credit evaluation fee as well for, for those uh, um, uh, uh, specifically. So, all right. And I think that's, I just, we have time for questions on all of those things that we just discussed. So for you to let us know if there's any questions from anybody. Yeah, there were a couple of, couple of questions that came in while you were presenting, Shannon. So I think one of them is about reference letters. So I just mm -hmm. want to uh, confirm with Michael here um, to make sure that um, your questions about expanding on the letters of reference have been answered. So Michael, if you have any further questions about the reference letters, uh, just let us know. I'm just going to go back to the slides. I think, um, yeah, that's, um, okay. You're welcome, Michael. Glad that you answered that question. Uh, yeah, like uh, like I said, the uh, the guidelines is is really important. Um, again, it's just yeah. comprehensive. You know, like you mentioned, Shannon, it has to be on a letterhead, has to be dated and signed. So it's it's quite a formal yeah. piece of information, right? So and, and sometimes even if you look at those reference guidelines, that might help you 
decide yeah. who might be the best uh, person to reach out to to write a strong reference letter for you. So really good yeah. point. Really good point. Yeah, like like you can determine. Okay, maybe this person may not be, you know, yeah. <laughs> the good referee, right? No, that's really good. Yeah. Um, the other couple of questions is about the accelerated route of entry, and I know we get that quite often. Mm -hmm. um, so the question was, is, is the accelerated route of entry also apply to those who don't have an undergraduate or designation? So unfortunately, no, um, it is not. For the accelerated, you must meet all of the admission requirements as stated there to be uh, qualified to apply to that route of entry. Um, if you do not meet any of those uh, three requirements, then you can look at the standard route of entry or the professional uh, designation entry or the um, solely based on eight plus years of management experience with no degrees. So hopefully that uh, answered the question. Uh, similarly, um, similar question about uh, GPA. What if your GPA is less? Uh, uh, sorry. What if what if your what if your GPA is more than 3.0, but you have um, uh, less uh, than six years of management experience? Will you get? Get into the program. Um, the only time when we consider the, the GPA is if you if you want to apply to accelerate it, then the GPA is just taken into consideration, which is 3.0 or higher, based on the last 60 credits. Um, if you do not have a GPA that meets that, and also sorry, for accelerated business business degree, so your Bachelor of Commerce, Bachelor of Management, or Bachelor of Administration, no other undergraduate degree would qualify for accelerated except for those business degrees, GPA of 3.0 or higher, or three years of management experience. If you do not meet um, those uh, requirements, then one of the, one of these three should um, should be good. Um, another question here is: How does one apply if they only have manual experience, and how should I find the information? Great question. So, if you do not have an undergraduate degree or professional designation, then you're looking at route number three, which is you know at least eight years of progressive management experience. You do have to apply to the graduate diploma in management uh, first. Then upon successfully completing that phase one of the program, then you can transfer to the MBA program. Um, and the uh, GDM and, and the um, MBA students do take uh, phase one courses together. So it's, it's not like it's a separate program, but you have to apply to the GDM um, first. And where do you get the information? It is, uh, it is on our website. Uh, when you enter the standard route, how long typically the program takes to complete? Great question. So I'm just going back to the program structure here. So you're looking at uh, between 14 months, around 14 months on average. So it's just slightly over a year to complete um, six core courses and the comprehensive exam. Um, again, comprehensive exam is only like six days. So you're looking at around 14 months to complete phase one. Um, if you take the courses back to back. Um, again, the beauty of our program is that flexibility, as I mentioned prior. Um, so if you want to take break between courses, you can absolutely do do so. But just uh, keep in mind by doing that, you'll be pushing your schedule out a bit um, because students have up to five years to complete the program. So typically on average, uh, it takes between two and a half to three years, uh, but you have up to five years to complete the program. Okay. I don't know, Shannon, uh, do you have anything else to add on uh, what I just I don't about? think so. I, I think you okay. hit all the marks, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. I'm just going to then move on to my part of this presentation. I see we have about 11 minutes left. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to quickly um, show you the uh, application process. But before that, thank you, Shannon and Marta, for your uh, great insights and tips on the application package. Thank you. Thank you. Very um, much. You're welcome. So this is, yeah, so I'm just going to show you um, again. I'm just going to take you to the website. See all the links that is in the PDF, which is uh, underlined in blue, is, is highlighted to our website. So I'm just going to click on that and bring you to the page. So again, um, what, what was discussed earlier today, it's all in on our website as well. So you can expand on the accordion here and you can see all of the information which you have uh, hopefully are familiar uh, at this point. Um, so from resume and this, this letter where you can download these uh, guidelines, which is uh, really, really helpful uh, for you to send to your 
um, referees. So from references, essay, transcripts, online form, and fees. So um, here's our uh, application deadline. So the next deadline is March 15th, which is a month away from today. If you are looking to start in May, if not, then we have the August intake and the January intake as well of 2025. So I'm just going to quickly brief you. So you click on that link where it says, um, sorry, start the graduate MBA application. So this takes you to our special portal. So for those who are listening, who, who are used to um, our undergraduate uh, portal, um, for the MBA program is slightly different. So you have to go to this portal to apply to the to the to either the graduate diploma in management or the MBA program. So you can um, create an account if you, if you don't if you haven't done already uh, for me i already have an account so i'm just going to sign in and just show you um, what the form looks like i'm, I'm not going to go through in detail i'm just um, and uh, looking looking at the time here but um so that this is where you you just start your application process uh it's going to taking a bit of time here i'm just going to see if, okay, here we go. Yeah. So as you can see, I've started lots of application as a demo. So I'm just going to go to the MBA one here. Um, and the, the the thing with our MBA, um, sorry, of our application process is that you can always um, uh, start and save and come back at a later time. So you can start um, by going through the the, the uh, steps here. And then you can always save and finish later to submit your, your application. So you start with the privacy policy, our privacy policy, and then you can start um, selecting all the um, programs. So for example, if you are applying with an undergraduate degree with three years of management experience, you'll select MBA program and then you select the cohorts, like I said, spring, fall, or winter. If you're applying without an undergraduate degree or without a profession designation, but at least eight years of management experience, then you select graduate diploma in management. Again, the cohort is the same because essentially it is, it is the same program, but you but you be classified in the graduate diploma in management um, at this point in phase one, and then you can select whether you want to transfer to MBA at the end of phase one or you just want to attain GDM only. Again, this is just something that you can always change uh, once you're in the program. Or if you if you meet the accelerated requirements, then you choose select uh, accelerated, and keep in mind. You do meet. You must meet all of the entry requirements for the acceler accelerated to apply to this route of entry, because there is an additional transfer credit fee, as Shannon mentioned, and also that, um, yeah. So we we really want to make sure that you meet the specific admission requirements for accelerated. That is very important for you, for you to do. So that's kind of brief demo of the. Um, of the uh, application form. I just want to make sure that, um, yeah, so pretty much this is an explanation um, of, of how that works. And um, the, the GDM is when you select for eight plus years of management experience. I see a question here. Um, if I apply to the GDM, do I then need to repeat the application process for MBA letters as a letter when I transfer? Oh, the great question. Uh, no, you do not need to repeat application because it is part of the program. So if you apply for the GDM uh, route of entry, you do not have to repeat your application process because we have everything on file for you. So you, all you have to do is just um, transfer to the MBA program in phase two. There is a nominal fee, I believe of $125, if I'm not mistaken, to change your status. Because the reason why is um, usually for a master's program, um, the regulations is that you need to have an undergraduate degree as a minimum, but because of us removing barriers to entry to the MBA program, we have this graduate diploma in management where you don't have an undergraduate degree, but with eight years of management experience. But once you move to the MBA proper, then we then you do require to have that transfer of that classification. It's essentially the same program. What is the total time of completion for GDM and phase two? So GDM is phase one of the program and phase two is the core and electives. So you're looking again between two and a half to three years um, total and you have up to five years to complete the program. Okay, these are great questions, Shannon. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, so this is again, um, a, a bit more explanation of, of which, um, which program you have to select upon uh, when you're applying. 
And again, this is all on your slides, it's all in the PDF. You can have a look um, once you are ready. So again, if you have submitted your application at this point, and if you have any, uh, if you need any assistance such as password resets or all uh, such matters, then you can contact our IT help desk at HDQ at at the bas uh, sorry, HDQ at FB dot at the basketu.ca for any technical support regarding your application uh, forms or portal, such as password resets. If you have submitted your application and wish to contact our graduate and remote advisors, the other ones who are proce processing your application, you can email them, them at fbgradenroll, that's fbgradenroll at athabaskau.ca. And again, just a quick reminder, there are three intakes, uh, the next one's coming up, which is the May spring, spring cohort and the deadline is March 15. Um, uh, oh, sorry. There, yeah, so we have three intakes a year, and the next one is coming up, which is March 15. And with that comes to the end of our presentation. So again, if you're unsure of your uh, um, qualifications, feel free to send us your resume for pre-assessment. Shannon and I and our colleague Erin are not on the MBA Missions Committee, so we cannot say yes or no, but we can definitely give you feedback and guidance based on what we have. We have what well, based on what we know about the MBA program and about the admission requirements. So feel free to send it to us at business-support at athabaskau.ca. Again, our email address is business-support at athabaskau.ca. And with that, um, yeah, that comes to the end of the formal presentation. I see a bunch of questions here. So I'm just going to um, go to the question list. Um, with the standard route, after you finish phase one, do you need to select transfer to MBA? Um, you can do that um, at the point of application. Uh, as you can remember, the form that I showed you that uh, you can you can pre-select that um, when you choose a GDM. See if you're applying to the GDM, you can. Do you intend to transfer to the MBA or change GDM only? So you can click transfer. That's great. But if you change your mind, that's okay too, because uh, at the end of phase one, our graduate enrollment advisors will contact you to. To, to continue with phase two, right? So again, we're always in con constant communication with you. So don't feel that you have to do this all at all at the beginning. Throughout the program, you will have touch points that um, you can always connect with, with our graduate enrollment advisors. They are dedicated admin uh, personnel that can help you uh, navigate through the program in terms of um, administrative processes and fees and all of that. So do not worry. Uh, if you intend to finish the MBA after phase one, you can always um, either do this at the front uh, at your, on your application form, or you can always contact us and we can always uh, change it for you, which is pretty easy. Okay, um, curious if Lakeland College Bachelor of Applied Business degree would qualify for the Excel the route of entry? Great question, Kevin. Um, Lakeland College Bachelor of Applied Business. I, as long as it's a business degree, uh, which is a um, full business degree. It can be 120 credits or 100, and, sorry, 120 credits or 90 credits. Uh, then, then it should be considered as a business degree. Another thing too that, sorry, Shannon, do you have any? Oh, I was just to... gonna, I was just gonna jump in and say um, that's a under the frequently asked questions for the accelerated entry. There's a yes. good, um, there's a good bullet point on. Um, the type of courses that that you want to ensure that that you've covered in your your business degree. So maybe Fareed can go to that and because you will yeah. know if you've taken these kind of courses. And uh, um, so I know you're pulling it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it should be on the screen now. Yeah, um, but if there is one bullet point. Um, it doesn't matter which courses I've taken. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, where is it? Uh, Here. Yeah, there it is. I think. Yes. You can, yeah. Yes. You can apply if you feel that undergraduate bachelor level is a, is a business degree. Uh, okay. Even though the, the name is not the same, but uh, yeah, the course. And then the, has, and has then the one before. underneath it, the undergraduate degree was a three-year program, but I believe so. Just that one will give you details on. If you click on that one. Uh, oh. 
sorry. Um... Yeah, so it's this one. So this, this is the question, right? About about, yeah. um, about, about the bachelors, yeah. Uh, okay, let's look at here. If I complete the GDM, do I need to apply for phase two right away or can there be a break because there is five years? So absolutely, uh, that's a great question. For the GDM- sorry, I was yes, just gonna interrupt. Ahead. If you just go to the one above this, the, uh, above the undergraduate degree, if I have a business, it doesn't matter which courses I've completed. That's the one I was trying oh, okay. to refer to. Sorry, um, okay. to answer that previous question. Um, uh, th these are the courses you wanna make sure you have covered in your degree. Um, so. Yeah, so make sure that you do, you're covered in all these courses, which is also part of the um, admission requirements for, um, you know, for accelerated, because with a business degree, you're looking at an accelerated route of entry. Yeah. So this is where you make sure that you you, you need to have these courses in your in your undergraduate yeah. um, studies. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to move on here. I know that we already one hour one minute over. Mm -hmm. um, the total cost of the program is uh, between fifty to fifty five thousand um, uh, dollars for the standard route of entry. So it will be less if you qualify for the accelerated route of entry. Uh, but keep in mind our uh, our fees and tuition are always subject to change, so you can always refer to our website. Um, I'm just going to put it up here um, in our calendar, business calendar. There's a fee section uh, that you can always refer to, and um, yeah. So it's right now it's between fifty one thousand if you choose the uh, apply pro apply project route in phase two, or you're looking at uh, 56,000 should you choose to do the elective route uh, to complete the program. Um, another question here is, um, yes, you can take a break between phase one and phase two. In fact, you can take a break between courses if you feel like you need to, that's not a problem. Uh, so yeah, not a problem. If you need to take a break uh, after you finish phase one, before you continue in phase two, that is not a problem. Okay, I'm just going to, um, if there's any more questions here, go ahead, Shannon. I was just going to add um, just just one last thing. Like, what what happens when we receive your application? Just so people know, um, once you officially apply and once we have all your documentation, then your application goes out to review. So it doesn't go out to review until everything's here. And if you're missing anything, um, our graduate enrollment advisors would be in touch with you to to let you know. Um, so, and then usually um, once it goes out to review, uh, you can usually count on between seven to 10 business days before you would be notified. Um, so I just wanted to add that because mm -hmm. that's what happens after you apply. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so I, yeah, so we are at, uh, ran a bit over. That's um, fine, great questions. So uh, again, any any last words from Marta or from Shannon before we end the session today? Marta, why why don't I go with you? Do you have anything to add um, before we end the session? Oh, oh I think Marta, Marta must, must have left. Oh, she she have the, <laughs> I, was gonna, I was just gonna say, you know, if you think of any questions, you know, please, please reach out to us. We're here to help and, uh, yeah. Happy to answer any other questions, and um, yeah, I, I hope that we've covered everything. And and thanks again for for joining us today. Great, thank you, Shannon, and thank you everyone for tuning in as well. And if, again, if you have any questions, feel free feel free to drop us an email at business-support at athabaskau.ca. Again, the email is business-support at athabaskau.ca, or you can call us you can call us at toll free one eight hundred. 561-4650, option number two. Again, our toll-free number is 1-800-561-4650, option number two. All right, so with that, I'm gonna end the session and thanks again for your great questions and for tuning in to our webinar today um, for the Athabasca University Online MBA program. So have a great day, everyone, and we look forward to seeing your application. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye for now. Bye.